Bird is making all the passes. How about that? Dime. Quickly ahead to Bird. Behind the back move. Dime. What a pass by Larry. Rebound to Bird. Crazy dime. Let's get it. We back. We got Larry Bird, the baddest man ever shoot a basketball. NBA Legends reaction. We reacting to this today. Happy New Year to everybody. If you're new to the channel, one of my New Year's resolution is to get over that margin of a thousand subscribers. So feel free to subscribe to the channel. Check out any more of the Larry Bird content we got on the channel. There's a huge playlist, about 30 videos. Um, and be sure to like the video and turn the notification bell on because we're doing more than just reactions this year. We will be talking about stuff like, you know, controversial stuff that, you know, people talk about what's going on in the NBA today, um, uh, what's been going on in the NBA for a long period of time, you know, why Larry Bird ain't the greatest or considered the greatest to everybody. So yeah, be sure to stick around, but look into the video. I want to talk y'all heads off. This is an hour long video, so it's going to be part one. And uh, we're probably going to watch about 15 minutes over here today. So let's get straight to it. Uh, so the hick from French Lick. He proudly dubbed himself the hick from French Lick. Who'd ever thought that that little blonde-headed boy would go on and be what he was? <clears throat> Larry Bird was the greatest player I ever played with by far. Bill Walton. Shout out to Bill Walton, one of the great, Larry Joe, everybody there, have been players out there who think I make it, but their team is right, I don't even know you can go to play, playing like that, ah, I can't keep up. We're going to pause it so we can read what these people are saying. What Larry didn't have an athletic ability, he made up for his skill, very skilled, very determined, and he had unshakable confidence. That is absolutely true. If you know anything about Larry Bird, he was very skilled, um, IQ-wise, and he had unshakable confidence. The man was one of the best trash talkers, any back to everything he ever said. He ever said. <laughs> Real talk. Danny Ainge. Oh yeah, this is a, this is Danny Ainge talk about this story all the time where Larry Bird used to have Danny Ainge go through the stadium and find out what the records was so Larry Bird can just you know have something to focus on while he went out there and played because he really felt like nobody was as good as him. That should say a lot. <laughs> when you got here, out of Indiana State, there's a story about when it dawned on you that you could be more than just a very good player, but you could be somebody who really mattered in the history of this league. Bird is making all the passes. How about that? Uh, Dime. Amazing. Quickly ahead to Bird. Behind the back move. Dime. What a pass by Larry. Rebound to Bird. Crazy dime. Oh, what a, what a show. We ain't even got to his shooting Billy yet. <laughs> what Michael Cooper say? Played against George Gervin, Andrew Tony D, Dr. J, Young Michael Jordan. Some of the best players I ever played in the game, but Larry will be the best. The best, silly. And if you ain't liked the video yet, that means you don't think Larry Bird the best. So drop a like right now. Not now. Right now. Silly. He is nearly perfect as can get in almost every phase of basketball. Jerry West, he ain't even play with Jerry West. Back in the bird, the ball away is gone. You don't play for the Boston Celtics. You never played professional basketball. This is what basketball is all about. And now there's a steal by Bird. Hold on. Underneath the DJ Layton. Hey, that right there changed the game in the playoff series right there. What Kareem say? Because he ain't played with Kareem either. You see how he's, so many greats was talking about Larry Bird in a good way and he didn't even play with him. He played against him. If you take 48 minutes of the game for every second of the clock, Larry knew where to be on the court to be the most effective for his team. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Hey, man, Larry has some real hot spots out there. If y'all never noticed, Larry has some hot spots where he would be basically on the left-hand side of the court going for three. Uh, those runners where he'd come and shoot the ball, fast pace, shooting it from beyond the arc, but off one foot. He did that, he did that a lot. 
Uh, top of the key, under the key. He has some hot spots out there. Pay attention, man. Check out some Larry Bird, man. Real talk. It's on the channel, too. When I play for Larry, when I play Larry was the only one I feared. A lot of black guys always ask me, did Larry Bird really play that good? I said Larry Bird is good. It's so good. It's frightening. It's frightening. Hey, man, look, a lot of people always want to throw race into this whole cop, this whole talk. But the truth be told is Larry Bird is better than a lot of people, just basketball players overall in general. No matter if you was black, white, yellow, green, purple, whatever the case may be, Larry Bird was more than like, likely going to be better than you. He was a six foot nine, six foot ten, small forward power forward that can shoot his butt off right at the peak of the three-point line. Like, right not the peak, I mean the beginning of the three-point line ages. Um, he carried his teams. He made everybody around him better. He had a great IQ, and he wore his heart on his sleeve. I don't know a lot of y'all know what that means, but he played with real heart and dedication. When he was out there, he didn't care about nothing else besides playing basketball. Yeah, he got into a few scuffles. <laughs> those are funny. Those, we got a couple of those on the channel, too. If you're new to the channel, go check them out. But... Other than that, he would have great sportsmanship. He didn't like to lose. And when he came to do work, he went to go to work. Work the hardest. And if you know anything about Larry Bird and his work ethic, check him out before he made before he made it to the NBA. Before he was even playing real college ball. Check out his work ethic. Do your research on that. <laughs> Silly. When I played, Larry Bird was the only one I feared. A lot of black guys always have me. Could Larry Bird really play that good? <laughs> I said, man, Larry Bird was so good, it's, it's frightening. You are watching what greatness is all about. Bird. Yeah! Double team and Bird. Larry, fake, fall away. That's that spot I told y'all about. The left side. He was a cold-blooded killer. Look in his eyes and you see a killer, <laughs> hypothetically speaking. You see a killer. He's going to bust your butt on that basketball court. What Isaiah Thomas had to say. I know they got funny stories, too. If you put all of this, put all of us in a room, you know, Magic, Jordan, myself, and Bird. Bird probably be the one who walks out of the room at the end of the day. And that's just because everybody knew Larry Bird wasn't going out without a fight. If you put all of us in a room, you know, Magic, Jordan, myself, and Bird. Bird probably be the guy who walks out of the room at the end of the day. Bird. Larry Bird. his own shot. What could we say? I would say as the years go on, people really forgot how great Larry Bird was. And I grew up in L.A. Just like everyone else here, hating his, hating his guts. <laughs> Dude was the guy. Dude, the guy was just money. Shout out to Kobe Bryant. R.I.P. is so. He was also a person that had his mind on something. And he set his mind, if he set his mind to it, he was going after it. On and out the basketball court. Two greats. Two of the greatest shooters of all time. Only other person I put in this conversation is Steph Curry. So, yeah. Shout out to Kobe Bryant. For recognizing Larry Bird, I mean. Shaq. What's Shaq got to say? Regular guy that could be doing it, that, that could do everything. You know, I thought most of what he did was luck. But as I got older and kept watching, I just knew that it was skill. Wow. Ain't that crazy? You know, Shaquille O'Neal probably came in the league. Hmm. What was that? And he came in the league probably in the 90s, late late 80s. Yeah, so he probably did get an opportunity to watch Larry Bird coming up in the game. And, you know, didn't get an opportunity to play with Larry Bird. Um, but Charles Barkley did. <laughs> and Charles Barkley, I'll tell you, Shaq, man, Larry was real deal. But you realize that. A lot of us have. I mean, I, me personally, when I first started doing my reaction to Larry Bird, I didn't think that he was that great. I thought it was more so a luck. And then I started to watch him more and more and more, hear more of his story, hear what other people had to say about him, watching things for myself. And then I realized the guy was talented. It's just that simple. Open his That's that left quarter again. I'm telling you, that's the spot. I said one of his hot spots. Larry, Larry. Pat Riley, you know, 
if he could, he had his two somebody to say the game, it'd be Jordan, save a life, it'd be Bird. <laughs> Shout out to Pat Riley, man. Iconic statement. Hey, behind the backboard is crazy. I'm talking about beyond crazy. You know, people. I don't. I don't recall too many people did that back in the day. Like the first person I ever seen actually do it in a basketball game was Kobe Bryant himself. Like, yeah, it was Kobe. So to actually know that Larry Bird did it before Kobe, it's crazy. Me game. And everybody else was playing checkers. He was three moves ahead of everybody else. And you never knew what he was going to do, but you knew it was going to be something special. Bird steals it. You can see it coming. And look at the pass to McHale. Isn't that beautiful? He would do a head fake, or he would do this, and the guy would turn, and he would just fake the crap out of guys. <laughs> After watching him play, I said, somebody went into a cave in French Lake, Indiana, found this cake of ice, started chipping away, and out popped this prehistoric <laughs> old-time basketball player. He played like the old-timers played. Red Auerbach selected him with the sixth pick in the NBA draft. I can remember somebody telling me I was just drafted by the Boston Celtics, and I was saying, what are you talking about? I had absolutely no clue that they even had a draft that day. I said to Red, I said, Red, why would you draft this guy, Bird, and you know he's not going to play? For this season. 1978 red drafted Indiana State junior Larry Bird, even though Bird had decided to stay in school for his senior year. It was odd that they drafted a player that they couldn't have right away, and it was more frustration for the fans to have to wait a year. And there were many who wondered whether Bird would be worth the wait. I came in uh, to the league, you know, I, I played a, a, a small town, I, I did very well, and everybody always said, he didn't play against anybody. I went to Indiana State, uh, same thing. White guy, Indiana State, can't jump, can't run. He was not fast, he was not quick. I was Larry Bird's biggest skeptic. The first time I saw Larry Bird was actually in a magazine. I saw his stats, blown away by his stats. But let's see if he can really do it against <laughs> us. But in his senior year, Bird became convinced the doubters. He would single-handedly lead the unknown Sycamores to the NCAA Finals. It's destiny for these guys. Once people saw him play, there were no doubts. We were watching Indiana State games here in Boston. Local TV made sure that they got their games because the Celtics were so bad. And he began to embody and represent hope. We came down a couple times. I go behind my back, no look to him. He no look back to me. <laughs> I'm saying, oh, man. Here's that last play. Magic Johnson going in, drops off the bird. Bird puts it back off inside to Johnson. Super bad. This guy got game. Winning College Player of the Year, Bird finished his career as the fifth all-time leading scorer in NCAA Division I history. Wow. He came to a game, and everybody starts standing up clapping, and I'm thinking, like, what in the hell is going on here? This guy didn't even play the game. They don't even know what he's about, but they just think that, you know, he's going to be the difference. The Great White Hope. <laughs> well, you know, it's very hard to say. But he ran away from that designation. He made it very clear, almost from day one, that he was not the Great White Hope. You know, the, the great players are the black players, and they're the best. Finally, Red's vision would become reality when Bird became a Celtic. Everything is starting to fall into place. I hope you all realize this. We got Larry. Such deference meant little to black Celtics like Curtis Rowe, Sidney Wicks, and Cedric Maxwell, who looked at Bird and saw not the great white hope, but another case of great white hype. One or two little moves, and we're ready to go. He didn't impress me no more than any white guy I've ever seen play before. I think that you would say that most black players at the time were racist. In, in the sense that we did not think that you could find a, a white guy who could play better than any black guy. So when I came in the league, there was a lot of doubters. It's crazy. And, you know, with my mentality, I thought, well, I'll go in there and, and, you know, I'll just do my best to get better. I'm thinking, oh, he's slow. He can't get off a shot. He's not that strong. This is going to be a layup. Bam. Knocks down a jump shot. Okay. 
maybe that was luck. <laughs> it, it was blowing my mind because he's dominating Jack Givens, player of the year in college basketball. Larry Bird is eating him alive. Gets the ball again. Bam, knocks down another jump shot. Now I'm thinking like, okay, hey, you know what? I'm gonna D this guy up. I'm gonna show him what it's like. 20 feet away, bam. 25 feet away, bam. Larry had the greatest step back I ever saw. You know, because he, he would give you to you on your left, and then he would step back mm -hmm. and let it go. And then he had, again, every time I talk about his shot, you know, it, you know, when you see a pretty ball rolling in the air. Bird now cuts free. That boy can shoot. Ain't and no the rest of fellas are sitting there going, hey, the boy bad. What can you say? I, my mind just goes so good. Damn, this white guy can play. And, and I think what America saw in this guy was somebody who really didn't see race. He doesn't see race. He really doesn't. Southern Indiana, the home, by the way, of the modern Ku Klux Klan. But how he managed not to be affected by the cultural milieu that he grew up in is, I think, a miracle. It's, to me, it's inexplicable. When I was in the seventh, eighth grade, we always had this basketball court there that a lot of the guys that worked at the hotel would be over there, and they always let me play in their games. They were all black players. I couldn't wait till school be over because I knew over on the courts, the waiters from the hotel would be over there. They were black, older. And they let me play. You know, I always looked at that as I got an opportunity to play against a black man, and they treated me good. I couldn't wait to play against the best, and at that time, they were the best. I wonder when these guys are going to start playing hard, you know? Mm. So, ML, we went out to eat one night, and ML Carr told me, he goes, man, you're going to be really good in this league. And I said, really? And I said, yeah, but you guys ain't playing. He goes, oh, yeah, we're playing. He said, they're talking about it. They think you're going to be pretty good. We will see other, you know, uh, American... Caucasian, I suppose, uh, <laughs> European American. There's, yeah, there's, there's one guy in NBA history that averages okay. 24.6 rebounds and 66 for his career. And I can Larry name Bird. you. Uh, superstars eventually will see more than one, Stephen A. Smith. I'm not so sure. Yeah, me neither. He was a basketball genius. He'd be a step ahead. Oh, oh, he was dropping some dimes. But on that, what they was talking about with Larry Burb. Uh, probably being the, the last uh, American or Caucasian um, basketball, legendary basketball player. I don't know if y'all know any other basketball players that's American, Caucasian, was born here, not overseas, born here in America. Drop them in the comments. Only person I can really think of right now that's doing a great job is um, Tyler Hero. I think he's from America. And then you have the other guy. Uh, Mike something. He was a great three point shooter. I know he played for the Heat with Wade for a little bit, and uh, around the time where uh LeBron was there, I think he had like a bunch of tattoos and a mohawk at one point in time. Um, I forgot what his name is, but um, I can't really think of no other basketball players that are Caucasian that are you know on their way to legendary status. Uh, maybe J.J. Reddick. Maybe J.J. Reddick is the closest thing, too. Um, shout out to him. I know he's you know, said some bad things about Larry Bird in the past, but shout out to J.J. Reddick. Hey, before we continue with the video, if you're new to the channel, be sure to like the video. Um, subscribe. Check out the playlist, uh, Larry Bird playlist. We got a lot of Larry Bird on this channel. We do a lot of Larry Bird here. And um, no tenure notification bells on, too. We got about, what, four more minutes left for this first episode. And we're going to do about three more. Cause this is an hour long video and I don't want to get it. I don't want to, I don't want y'all to get sleepy on me, <laughs> but let's try to get the video up to hundred likes still, baby. Let's get it. It wasn't quick. Couldn't jump really high, but there was just some sleepless nights. Bird takes the bomb. It's gone. It is gone. Bounce Bird. Nice tip to McHale. He had a mind that was like a That was camera. a no look. He had the best hand eye coordination maybe of anybody that ever played basketball. Shout out to Bob, Bob Knight, too. Y'all know, to be told, Larry Bird was originally picked up to go to play with Bob Knight with the Indiana Hoosers. I didn't know this until lately. So like I was saying before, go check out the other videos on my channel. You'll find out this information. But he was originally picked up to play with the Indiana Hoosers, and he ended up quitting with them because he wasn't so used to being around that many people. All at one time, you know, Indiana Hoosers was a bad, bad college back in the day. 
You know, I, I watched the movie and everything like that. So they really were big time. And, and he, he was supposed to, Larry Bird was supposed to go there, but he ended up going home saying, forget that. I'm taking care of my family. It's work a regular job. And then a guy named Bill Hodges came and picked him up. I just learned all the information too. Some of my last video on Larry Bird we just dropped. Um, but yeah, Bill Hodges picked him up, talked him to come and play with a Terry Hoop, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, the rest was a Cinderella story. Silly. I never saw a man play a better behavior basketball, ever. That's the greatest individual performance. I would love just that tape to be shown to every high school and college coach, or every pro coach now, just uh, everybody, just say, uh, this, this is this is the greatest, this is how you can't play basketball better than this. You can't. Ooh, wow. Now they clear aside for Larry. Freak. Freak. Oh. Didn't see that coming. This guy was going to do one thing almost every night that really spun your head around. Kale picks up Rodney McRae on a switch. Sampson guarded by Bird, but Bird doing a good job against him. Travel, he called against Ralph. Bird going to the floor for it. This game is Larry Bird. Kale charged for it. He goes down. Larry Bird dies for the when I say he wore his heart on his sleeve, I mean he wore his heart on his sleeve, man. He was all over the floor, man. The man looked like the dude that'd be out there with the little mop, sweeping up the sweat. But it was just Larry Bird out there with a stick on him. And the dude was just using that to sweep up all the sweat. Because <laughs> Larry Bird was always on the floor. Oh, and, gets it to and you look at the numbers and it's like, eh, 29, 10, and 12, something like that. But it wasn't like he didn't shoot lights out. His PR wasn't the best of any bird performance, but like, you know, just being in the arena for that game and the way he played and how he was just everywhere on the court, like a free safety. Here he was out there with a court of black guys out there talking trash with him. Just freaking maniac for three and a half quarters. I have never seen anybody have an imprint on that game scoring less than 30 points. Bird averaged 21 points, 10 rebounds, and 5 assists to beat Magic for Rookie of the Year honors. Make no mistake, Magic Johnson, I will f***ing end you. <laughs> getting rebounds, getting points. That was a shot. To sum this up, let me ask you this. Is it fair for me to believe that even black fans, after a while, were, were perfectly willing to acknowledge that Larry Bird was the baddest white boy ever to shoot a basketball? Oh, that's easy. Okay. Oh, I that's just, easy. I mean, just, I, can tell you, I can tell you right now, I can tell you right now. I, I never saw anybody, including Michael, obviously a vastly superior individual defensive player than Larry ever was, but not that day. Larry Bird read every play, he read every, read every one of the minds of the Rockets before they made a move. Larry Bird, could, Larry Bird could walk, literally in his heyday, he could walk into any black neighborhood in America. Level finds an opening. And they'd be like, hey, that's Larry Bird. Come on over, you know, <laughs> because he could ball. He could ball. And Dominique Wilkins, you know, said it best. That's a bad boy and what have you. Dominique Wilkins versus Larry Bird. That's a good one. Uh, going against a guy with a competitive edge like you've never seen. And a guy that you couldn't make mistakes against because he would find a way to hurt you. And not only that. Let's give Larry Bird profound respect. When you could play, first of all, when, when Larry Bird sat up there and said he didn't see color, I want everybody to know it was truly believable in the black community. Yeah. Everybody looked it up. Oh, we believe that because Larry Bird didn't care. You could either play or you couldn't. Straight up. And on that note, like I told y'all, that is the first episode to a more so four-part series. That way we can, you know, get them all in. We can talk about some stuff. And the videos are not that long. I don't want to start off the year with dropping hour-long videos on reactions and stuff like that. So just be sure to like the video and stay tuned for the next one to drop. Maybe later on the day, maybe tomorrow morning. Um, but believe me, they will be coming back to back. More consistent again. I know I haven't been here in a while, but it, 
I was getting myself ready for the year to come. Like I told you, I've been trying to get over the hump. You know, trying to get a thousand subscribers. Uh, gracefully, I've been blessed by God, you know, in so many ways. That I'm only a 102, 103 subscribers away. Hopefully, you are the next one to help me get a little bit closer to that. So, be sure to like the video, subscribe, and turn notification bells on because we have a lot more Larry Bird content coming. We're also going to probably be doing our, our own content. My own I'm also be doing my own content as well. I'm doing a breakdown of why I feel like the nation of the basketball fans haven't um, acknowledged Larry Bird and gave him his recognition for being literally the best uh, basketball player of all time, or if not, the second best. I don't care what no one says. Check out the channel. Check out the highlights. And you will see for yourself that Larry Bird really was smart skilled, humble, and the best player of all time. But it's your boy, DJ Nero. We out. Stay tuned. We drop more content. And be sure to like the video, y'all. Let's get up to 100 likes.